Um, in this session, we'll be solving problems based on the concepts that we have already seen in this chapter. So this is the first example given to us. Uh, in the circuit shown, the value of R in ohm that will result in no current through the 30 volt battery is. Uh, so here we have to determine the value of the resistance for which there is no current in this branch of the circuit. Okay. Uh, so here what we'll be doing is we'll be applying Kirchhoff's voltage and current law. Okay. And uh, use uh, that law to get the value of the external resistance R present in the circuit. Okay. So let us assume that the current which is flowing through this battery is I1, which as per our case, this is equal to zero. Uh, and the current, which is because of this cell is I2. Okay. So if we'll apply KCL at this node, okay. The, so as per KCL, we know that the sum of the summation of uh, incoming current must be equal to the summation of outgoing current. Okay. So the outgoing current would be the summation of these two. That means it would be I1 plus I2. Okay. Uh, now, uh, if we'll apply KVL to both these loops, let us assume that the direction of the loop in both the cases, we have considered it as it as clockwise. Okay, so let us take the direction of the loop for both the cases as clockwise. Okay, similarly for this loop, we'll be taking a clockwise direction for the loop. Okay, now if we'll apply KVL to the first loop. Okay, so if we'll apply KVL to the first loop, what we'll be getting is uh, we'll start from this end. Okay, we are moving from the negative terminal to positive terminal of the battery. So that means the EMF would be positive. So we'll be getting plus thirty. Then the second element encountered is the cell of voltage uh, of EMF 50 volts. Now we are, for this cell, we are moving from the positive terminal to negative terminal. So that means the EMF would be negative. So minus 50. Okay. Then for this resistor, the current I2 is in upward direction and we are moving in downward direction. So that means the potential drop across this resistor of 20 ohm would be positive. So this will give us a potential drop of 20 I2. For the resistor of 10 ohm, the current I1 is flowing uh, in the same direction as that of the direction of the loop. So we'll be getting a drop in the potential of value 10 I1 okay, equals to zero. So this is as per Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, we have applied Kirchhoff's voltage law to the first uh, loop. Now uh, we know from uh, the data which is given to us that there is no current in the across the 30 volt uh, battery. That means I1 is equal to zero. So if we'll reduce I1 to zero, we'll be getting an expression for I2 as 20 I2 is equivalent to 20. That means I2 is equal to one ampere. Okay. So this is the value of the current I2. Okay. Now what we require is the value of R. Uh, now in order to get the value of R, okay, what we'll be doing is we'll be applying KVL to the second loop. Okay. Now if we'll apply KVL to the second loop, okay, let us start from this end. Okay. The current I2 and the direction of the loop this clockwise direction both coincides. So we'll be having a negative potential drop of minus 20 I2. Then a battery from uh, for which we are moving from negative terminal to the positive terminal. So a positive EMF of plus 50. Then the current direction and the loop uh, direction both coincide. So a negative potential drop of I1 plus I2 times of R equals to zero. Okay, this is by applying KVL to the second loop. Now we know the value of I1 as zero and the value of I2, which we have obtained it is one ampere. So if we will substitute for these values, we'll get the value of R. So for substituting the value of I2 as one and I1 as zero, we'll be getting the value of the resistor R as 30. Okay. So this is the value of the R. Okay for this uh, resistor in the circuit shown. Uh, now, next problem we'll be uh, solving based on uh, galvanometer, okay, the concept for uh, conversion of galvanometer into an emitter. Okay, so this is the question given to us. Uh, the maximum current in a galvanometer can be 10 milliampere. Its resistance is 10 ohm. To convert it into an emitter of 1 ampere, a resistor should be connected in. Okay, the options given to us are uh, series 0.1 ohm, parallel 0.1 ohm, series 100 ohm or parallel 100 ohm. Uh, now, uh, this is uh, the problem based on the concept of conversion of galvanometer into an emitter. Now, uh, we know from the concept that we have seen uh, previously that in order to convert a galvanometer into an emitter, we need to connect a shunt resistor of a very low value in parallel to the galvanometer. Okay. So, the circuit would be a galvanometer okay, and a shunt resistor of low value in parallel 
to the galvanometer. Now, uh, the data which is given to us, the maximum current in a galvanometer can be 10 milliampere. That means the full scale deflection current, IG, given to us is 10 milliampere. Okay. And uh, its resistance is 10 ohm. That means the value of G is 10 ohm to convert it into an emitter of 1 ampere. So, our aim is to convert the galvanometer into an emitter such that it reads a um, value of 1 ampere. Okay. So, the range, we have to increase the range of the galvanometer from 10 milliampere to 1 ampere. Okay. So, this is the I. So, uh, if we'll uh, see, we'll get that the current which is passing through the galvanometer is IG and the current that will pass through the shunt resistor would be I minus IG. Okay. This is by applying KCL to this node. Now, uh, we know that since they are connected in parallel, the potential drop for both these uh, devices, both these points would be same. Across both these points would be same. So, we'll be getting S to I minus IG. This is the potential across the shunt resistor S and uh, the potential across the galvanometer would be G times IG. Okay. So, from here, we know that the value of S is G IG divided by I minus IG. Now, if we will put for the values uh, given here, we will be getting the value of S as 10 to 10 milli divided by. Okay. Uh, so, this is approximately equal to 10 to the power minus uh, 10. Yeah, uh, what we can do here is this 10 milli uh, ampere is very small in comparison to 10. So we have approximated the denominator as 10. Okay, now uh, from here we'll be getting the value of S as uh, 10 power of minus 1. Okay, so this will give us a result of 0 0.10. Okay, and that is connected in parallel okay because uh, here the resistor uh, the shunt resistor s should be connected in parallel to convert the galvanometer into an emitter so the correct uh, value for uh, this problem would be to connect a resistor in parallel with a value of 0.1 ohm